Hey y'all, sorry for the video quality on this. I'm working on getting a better camera setup right now, but the information is worth it. I promise, stick around. With latency being the biggest seller of this product, that's where I'm gonna start. I did my best to visualize this for you, but my setup does have a little bit of lat latency inherent to it, so keep that in mind. In person, you wouldn't have that. So take it with a grain of salt, you're experiencing a little bit more latency in this video than you would in person. This is me testing audio sync with gaming mode off. You can see for yourself whether or not my lips are in sync. This is me testing audio sync with gaming mode on. Do you notice the difference? With gray mode off, these have absolutely great latency, significantly better than most of the ones that you're using right now if they're not Bluetooth 5.0. With game mode on, they're nearly spotless. Movies, YouTube, and most games will have absolutely no issue. Keep in mind, competitive gamers try and keep their MS down to 15, and on these, they're advertised around 60. So if you're a competitive gamer, these aren't quite there yet, but your average gaming is gonna be not a problem. You might have some issue if you have music games where you have to play to the beat. You might get a desync there, but other than that, you're, you're gonna be fine. We do have AAC for iPhone users and SBC for Android users. No app decks, but Bluetooth 5.0 might make that a little bit obsolete at this point. With the throughput, we'll see, but all devices going forward will be Bluetooth 5.0. Not all devices will have app decks, so that's something to keep in mind. As for range, these are absolutely stellar. I was able to go 150 feet down the hallway with no connection loss, and I ran out of room to go, so I turned the corner, went another 20 feet, and I still was able to connect to my phone. No issues. Connecting and reconnecting is also blazing fast. By the time you take it out of the case in your ear, it'll be connected almost every single time. Let's talk about what these sound like. Now we're gonna get into opinion territory here, but I'm gonna try and keep it as scientific as possible. The songs I like to use are Watsky Bet Against Me, Mezzanine Teardrop, and for the bass, I like to do Pop the Trunk. Bet Against Me and Teardrop are for soundstage and fidelity. These sound very, very spacious, probably because they're not having such a tight seal. They're able to create a larger sound area. Watsky's song is supposed to sound slightly distant, almost like it's coming from the next room, and it does that quite well. Teardrop sounded good, but not perfect. I'd rate it probably about an eight out of 10. Going into bass is where we get into controversial territory. These have great punchy bass, tight, not muddy, very responsive across most, most frequencies until you get into the sub bass. Once you're in that sub bass area, if you've been using bows, Beats or Sony, not Bose, but Beats or Sony, you're not gonna love these because it's not punchy. It's not that thousand watt subwoofer in the trunk of your, your car. It's more tight and purposeful. They're very similar to AirPods, but a little less punchy than that. I would rate bass seven out of 10, simply because there's not enough oomph for me. And I, I do like some bassy music, though my tastes are, are mellowing out on that category. If you have a more flat profile that you enjoy, these are perfect for you. They're more like Sennheiser. If you're familiar with those, that's gonna be more what you're, you're experiencing here. Max volume is an absolute 10 out of 10. You're gonna wanna be careful with these. Don't blast them too loud. If your outside environment is really, really loud, you could hurt your ears. I did want to test the quality of the sound with low latency mode on because I was curious why they didn't have low latency on by default. You're not really going to notice anything. I'm going to say perceptibly because I bet if we actually took it to a frequency chart there might be some changes or perhaps it's band changes altogether but I didn't really notice much of a difference at all. As for sound isolation, they're exactly what you'd expect. If you used AirPods, it's the same deal. You can use the rubber seals which will uh, help the sound isolation a little bit and it also actually increases the bass because it's creating that tighter seal Which is one of the reasons these don't have as punchy of bass is because the seal isn't as tight Which is good for your ears, but that's personal preference if you're running or jogging at a decent Volume you'll be able to hear traffic and people no problem 
but be careful if you turn it up you do kind of start to get into your own little world except for rather loud noises that so that is either good or bad depending on your preference i'd rate these about a six out of ten not quite open back but not quite sealed all right y'all sorry for the the lighting change setting change i had to redo this shot because i didn't believe the test that i conducted uh, I wanted to look at the battery test real quick. I want to talk about what you can and can't do as far as the battery goes. The website claims 90 minutes to charge the case, 90 minutes to charge the earbuds inside of the case. Uh, you can charge either one of them while listening to the other one, which is an absolute prime factor for me. If you can't do that, they're not an all day earbud to me because you're going to be without audio for some period of time. Um, I am going to look at notes real quick just because I'm kind of excited and I want to uh, make sure I'm covering this and I'm refilming. So you get uh, stated is four hours of use, three extra charges on the case, 16 hours total, 12 in the case, four on the earbuds. When I went to go redrain these today, in my first test I got, you know, four and a half hours or so. It took me over five hours to redrain these. And I got it, in, and when they finally disconnected saying low battery, I popped them back in and it still said 10% battery. I thought that's good enough. I can do my, my quick charge test. I wanted to see when I put it in the case, how long or how much battery 15 minutes would give you. I took, took it in, set a timer for exactly 15 minutes, got them out of the case by 15 minutes and five seconds, looked at the charge, it was at 70%. I've been fooling around for a half hour, hour with them to make sure it wasn't a glitch and it's reading wrong, they're still at 60%. So I know with the AirPods, what they do is they, add, they, they peak the draw out for the 15 minutes and then to keep it from overheating, they drop it down and naturally the latter half of a lithium battery takes longer to charge anyways. So they peak that charge and they're probably doing the exact same thing here where they just give you a huge boost in juice. And again, I'm sorry, I know I'm looking at uh, at my notes because my notes are just listing how a major downside of these is it takes 90 minutes to charge the earbuds inside of the case so that was going to be a major talking point for me and that's just obsolete these things charge lightning quick i had never paid attention before to that portion of the test because i was just using them i put them in the case and use them so i wanted to do a full drain and see how long it actually took so the, they are that's a huge plus this is kind of rambling i'm, I'm going on but that, that spikes these up really high in my book. The fact that these are a true all day product because you can use one, charge the other for five, 10 minutes, use the other, charge it for five, 10 minutes, and they do seamlessly. When I drop one and drop the other, it connects no problem, really, really quick. Um, and then, then you have uh, you know, five minutes here, five minutes there, and you've got a couple hours of charge uh, back, on, back on your device. So really, really excited about that. Just double check and I did covered everything. That's it, back to the normal video. One area these earbuds absolutely excel is the fit. They are very lightweight and ultra comfortable. One of the prime reasons why I can't use my Jaybirds or some of the other ones is because after about an hour, they start to feel very, very uncomfortable. These ones absolutely disappear in my ears with or without the silicone covers. The nice part about those covers is not only do they offer a different seal, they offer a different size. So if your ears are a little bit bigger, pop those on and it's gonna fit better for you. You can also charge these with the covers on as where some of the other competitors, once you put the covers on, they won't go into the case, they won't charge, you can't close it. I did try and find out the price for new covers and the best I could find is rumors for about $10. If I find some links for them, I'll try and post them. Uh, I imagine there's gonna be some aftermarket ones eventually or hopefully Razer will put them up on their website. I've been able to run in these, box in these, go biking in these, sit ups, everything, and I've yet to have them fall out. And they're also probably the ones that I adjust the least in my ear. I rarely ever, in fact, I think in my first battery test, trying to see how long they lasted, over four, four and a half hours, I didn't adjust them once. I forgot they were there. It was, it was a beautiful thing. All right, this is me testing the audio quality of the microphone. Right now I'm in a car with very little background noise. I'm gonna go ahead and turn up the radio a little bit and see if you can still hear me. This is a pretty loud listening volume. And I'm also going to roll down the windows, turn the radio off and see if you can still hear me now. We are going 20 miles per hour, 30. And this is me talking with the wind blowing. Now we know the fit on these is an absolute plus. However, one of the downsides is the apps. The app has almost no functionality whatsoever. It gives you a tutorial on how to use them. 
but it doesn't give you an EQ, which might be able to bring up that bass. You could use an aftermarket EQ, an EQ app on your phone, but the app itself should have one, just like, just like so many of the other ones do. In the app, the tutorial, which is the only two things you do with that app is update your firmware and go through the tutorial. The functionalities of these, again, this is not a, a huge upside because there's no volume control. So that's another thing that a future iteration would absolutely need. What you can do is accept calls, reject calls, play and pause music by doing a short press, just like this. You're gonna play and pause. Two tap, next track, three tap, track before, one, two, three, and hold, turns on gaming mode. Now, another thing I would like to see change is gaming mode does not stay on. If you put it into your case or turn these off and you take them back out, you're now back to normal mode. It's not a hassle to turn on gaming mode, but I would like to see it stay in gaming mode because for me personally, I will always be using it that way. And with the ability to charge one while using the other one left or right, I don't care if it drains the battery more. I'd rather just be able to get that low latency because I do a lot of video watching. A lot of reviewers are going to talk about build quality. Build quality is not something you can tell out, out of the box. I've owned a lot of Razer products over the years and while some of the forums will complain about things breaking, headphones snapping, I wonder what you did to cause those to break, but maybe that's just me. I've had quite a few Razer products over the, the last decade and I've never actually had one break on me personally. Uh, I know some people have broken theirs without some serious force, but you did tweak it in a way. Could that be fixed? Could that be better? Absolutely. The build quality on these, a lot of reviewers are going to say they feel cheap because they do. They, they, feel, they feel cheap. I think that's because of how light they are and the, the plastic doesn't have any kind of coating on it. There's no kind of matte finish, rubberized finish to, or soft touch finish, so it just feels like cheap lightweight plastic in your ear honestly so i i can absolutely understand that that for me isn't a big downside because i'm paying a hundred dollars for these and i'd rather not pay the extra 20 or 30 dollars to feel premium especially with something like this where you're likely to to lose these guys um i'd rather these be as cheap as possible so that i can i can replace them if necessary so what's my recommendation on these I think if you need a pair of earbuds to last you all day, to be comfortable, to have low latency, a lot of video watching or a lot of gaming, these are the right ones for you. I would love to see a wireless charging case and for the app to have an equalizer in it, but those are my only real gripes for it. If you need a lot of bass, like you've been using Sony or Beats, th these probably won't be for you. If you like a more flat, true to the music's recording sound, these are pretty accurate and I, I like them for that. For me, these are actually replacing my Jaybird as my daily carry, largely for those reasons. You've, get a, you've got charge all day, you're never gonna run out. With the advent of no headphone jacks anymore, you need to be able to use these. If you use your phone as much as I do, you need something that's in your ear all day. The fact that it's not sealed and pushing in is much more hygienic for your ear and as long as you're not cranking up the volume, doctors would recommend this. The downside is a lot of people, because it's not as a tight seal, you're not getting as much bass, they'll crank up the volume, which is then in turn worse for you. So if you could get these for $80, they would be an instant buy for me. For $100, they are still a fantastic buy. You just have to keep in mind the lack of bass if these other features don't outweigh that for you, that's about the only downfall for me. Would I recommend them? They're now my personal EDC. I'm wearing these every day. Y'all, that's the end of the review. Uh, this is just me now talking now. What I'm trying to do with this channel is do reviews that don't focus on the gimmicks. I want to know if I'm reviewing a cell phone, how bright is the display so can I use it in sunlight? How good's the cell reception? How good's the Wi-Fi wi reception? Things you don't hear in reviews anymore. Where a 90 hertz display is a nice thing to have. It's not... I'd rather be able to make a phone call or download a video than view a video in 90 hertz that's only viewing in, in 24 FPS anyways. The animations are nice and all that stuff. But So I'm going to focus on the core of the products and mention the gimmicks. 
and that's 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 my goal here so if you have any recommendations if you think of some tests that I could have done in this video however you would like this done please let me know in the comments below I'm, I'm one of these guys now please like comment and subscribe comment on recommendations comment anything that's how this gets paid for it's not a monetized channel right now it's it's just me doing this out of my pocket I was finding an inability to find some of these deep resources on some of these products and I'm an engineer so I figured I would I would try and do that for you guys that's it thank you very much for your time I'm JKP 